so I've started assembling the uh, the board now and uh, to save watching you uh, solder lots of resistors you can see that I've populated the board now with all of the uh, axial resistors and I'm just in the process of soldering some of these single row resistor networks on now I've done one and I'm part way through assembling the other uh, so far it's going pretty well I think that I am very pleased with the top board um, I've taken special care to make sure all of the resistors are aligned so the component um, values the rings read from left to right which might make debugging a bit easier but it certainly satisfies my OCD uh, the diodes um, in particular I think I've soldered the right way around um, my eyesight is not as good as it used to be but I think I've got those right and the book board's looking okay so uh, I'm actually just in the process of soldering resistor one which is this fella here so I've put two of the pins, soldered two or three of the pins already. So the idea behind these, and I do this with any multi-pin component, is I solder for resistor um, networks, single row ones, I solder the leftmost and the rightmost pin, flick it over, uh, check it's aligned, and then solder the rest once I'm happy with the alignments. And it's the same with IC sockets, so I'll solder the leftmost and... I will solder the rightmost, top left, bottom right hand corner, flick it over, check the IC sockets level, and then solder the rest of the pins in. It often helps to secure the component in place of a bit of blue tack. I usually use some masking tape, so I've got a roll of that handy, just to uh, stick on the board, top level of the board, just to keep the component steady whilst I'm doing the soldering. So. I'll do a little bit of soldering now so you can watch me struggle. I'm usually using Weller 6040 solder, leaded solder, and it's got a rosin core which helps it flow a lot better. So, you can see here, let me zoom the camera in a little bit. There we go. The trick with soldering is to take your time. So, I've, I've got a solder station that temperature on this is currently set to 350 degrees. I'm using um, a finish conical tip. My eyesight is not the best. You can see what I'm doing. I heat up the pad, the component pin through it, making sure I'm touching the pad and the component leg. Hold it on for two or three seconds and then hopefully Solder flow. Maybe my soldering iron needs a bit of tinning here at this point. So I'll tin. Just give it a wipe in my steel wool thing. Let's try that again. So heat the component. There we go. Hold it on for a couple of seconds. And there we go. A perfect joint. And repeat. So, a couple of seconds, there we go, feed the soda through, and again, two more to go, there we go, and the last one, there we go, doesn't need an awful lot of solda. Let's put the soldering iron back on the stand for the moment. Hopefully, that has done the trick. So if I zoom in, just about make out that solder joints on there look good. Use my trusty magnifying glass just to double check. Yeah, that should do the trick. And top side, nice and straight. Okay, so I've got two more of these to do. The trick with these components is pin one, and you can see that pin one, which is this one, is marked with a dot. The Harlequin board um, pin ones are always got a square pants. So you can see, for example, here, P1, 
pin one of this chip has got a square pad and this is for the resistor oh where's the sheet gone there? resistor 2 thankfully bright delight bag and number all of their components so you can use those as alongside the instructions to make sure everything goes correctly. So I've got to lo locate resistor 2 on here. See if you can find it before I do. Okay, I think I've located it. I think it's this row here. Between these two chips. It's not labelled on the board, which is probably why I've not missed it. So let's go back to the diagram. Just to double check. That will be there. <laughs> it's not labelled on the diagram either. Um, that is interesting. Does it say anything in the notes? Resistor 2 not printed on the board. Hey, here we go. So, it helps if you read the instructions. Is between U6 and U36 with pin on top. Pin 1 on top. So well done to Mike Delight there for comprehensive instructions. Uh, I think I need to go to the back of the class for not reading them. So it's between U6 and U36. So it is there. So I'm going to pop that in to here. Making sure pin one is on the square hole. Just double check that is pin one. I must want to unsolder this. Yes, that is pin one. Okay, so this is the trick that I usually employ. Oh, by the way, these rubber mats are actually incredibly helpful if you uh, do a lot of soldering. They stop things from slipping around. And uh, this particular one's got a couple of useful compartments up at the top so that I can. Uh, Keep screws and components there overnight without having to take the whole thing down. Right, just getting some tape off the roll. Just a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is just secure it in place. Make sure it's nice and level. It'll be my helper, my third pair of hands. So that's looking pretty level. Um, just prop it up there. You can see the pins there. Get my soldering iron. Get the solder. And repeat what I did before. So, pin one. There we go. End pin. I really do recommend getting a temperature controlled soldering iron. I'll uh, include links to the one I use. Uh, they're not terribly expensive. I mean, the one I got is probably a little bit more expensive than some people are prepared to pay. It was £200, but it's certainly by far no means the most expensive. And uh, it does help somewhat. Mine's also got a desoldering station. Okay, so that's looking a bit proud there. So what I can do is just push it through there we go so that's the advantage of doing that basically if you get things cockeyed you're not having to desolder the whole lot so that's pretty flush now okay so the last one is resistor 61 which is for the joystick port I've already located this I think there we go so that goes at the end here I think this is an optional one, but as I might put a joystick port on at some point, I'm going to jumper it so that the joystick port's disabled, but at least get all of the components soldered on the board. So, yeah, get some more tape. Tape really is a wonderful thing. Just get that secure and level. 
we'll do the tray a bit cockeyed there. I'm planning on this looking fairly neat rather than all over the place. Be nice to have a bit of a board to show off. There we go. So prop that up. Let's do what I did before. That's not pin one, this is pin one. There you go. In the stand, take it off, check for alignment. I mean, that's pretty damn good, that isn't it, really? Finish the job off. So, this is basically soldering. It's a really good skill, though, to uh, get into. It's actually quite nice soldering. A fresh board rather than repairing a 30 year old retro board. There we go. Look at that. Fantastic. Right, so. Oh, nearly dropped the whole thing then. That would have been a bit of a mistake, wouldn't it? Right, just got one more resistor pack to go on now, I think. Have I done them all? U47. Oh, that's a dip. Right, okay. So, U47 will be in here somewhere. bag of chips out. Now which one of these is U47? That's a 4116. This is where labelling would come in handy. But they all look like chips to me. I'll come back to you on this one. Right, back again. Found the missing chip. The joys of component numbering. So it's this fella here. The one that said that was a 4116 isn't actually a 4116 RAM chip. But according to the Farmel website, I've just looked up the component number on there, which um, by the light of thoughtfully provided component number 9355960 is a 4116R-1-471 LF fixed network resistor. So I looked at it thinking it was a 4116 RAM chip, but then that wouldn't have made any sense. Um, I think that's a RAM chip typically used in Spectrums, bizarrely, but not in this one. So let's get this fella out. Let's move that socket for a minute. Now this one gets soldered directly to the board, which I'm not particularly bothered about. I do dislike soldering things to boards, chips specifically, that are... Um, susceptible to issues with static and heat. But as this is a resistor network, that shouldn't really be a problem. So talking about static and heat, I'm just going to bag these back up again. I'll stick them over there for the moment. So like a chip, it's got a notch at the top and that will be pin one will be top left. So that fella goes in there like that. That I don't even need to bend the pins. Let's just double check. Ha, <laughs> putting it in the wrong place anyway. Good job I checked. U47 goes in here next to that other resistor pack. So that will go in there like that. Let's double check. My father always used to say, measure twice, cut once, which is a very good, very, very good thing to bear in mind, even when soldering. So pin one square, U47, that's the notch. Stick it in there. In we go. In we go. There we go. Doesn't need a socket. The instructions say no IC socket required. So let's reuse my piece of tape. 
to secure it in place temporarily whilst I solder the top left and bottom right corner. So pop it over. Actually my pad at this point will probably be sufficient to hold it in place. So where was that on the board now? Uh, there it is. So first things first, I'm not going to have a chance of soldering this without my glasses on. Let's have a common picking look at getting this soldered now. So let's do pin one. Uh, this is so much better than soldering all the resistors, that took forever. He said, maybe my soldering iron needs a bit of a clean. Let's wipe that. In it. I should have done that over the board really. There's always a chance that solder lands and bridges something you don't want to. Let's do that again then. So one. The telltale whiff of smoke there as it heats up. There we go. That's the rosin. There. Let's see how well that's aligned. Uh, uh, it's not looking too bad. Maybe push it a little bit more. There we go. There. There. Double check that. I am a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to stuff like that. There's nothing worse than seeing a wonky looking board with chips all badly aligned. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Right, let's get the rest of those pins soldered now then. So. No particular order now. Flowing very well. Let's try that again. Heat. There we go. There's always a danger if you heat the pad for too long, especially on older boards, that you lift it. I've done that on a Spectrum I was repairing. It took me ages to. What's wrong with my soldering iron at the moment? Is it not up to temperature? Am I not pressing hard enough? There we go. I think it just needs a bit of tinning. It'll get easier as the... Maybe I've got it slightly too cool. I'm not sure. 350 is normally good enough for this kind of thing. Now maybe it's because it's a component that's taking the heat away, I don't know. There we go. Just need a tinning. One, two. There. One, two, three. Go. One, two, three. I'm going to have to get some of this solder, I think. I'm going for it like Billy at the moment. About three pounds on Amazon. Two, three. Hmm. Yeah. It's because I was holding the soldering iron at a slight angle. I wasn't getting all of the heat to the component, or the pad, I should say. That's better. There we go. Right, so that's that done. 
just double check it. Always worthwhile checking your work as you're going along to make sure you're not bridged anything or got dry joints. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking all right. Um, looked at the instructions. The next job is to solder in the IC socket. So I'm going to make a start on that. I'm not going to bore you with the details. Uh, I'll probably drop back in with the next video near the end of soldering the IC sockets in and uh, show you uh, my new toy, which is a component tester as we look at capacitors and transistors. And then I think it we're on the home run once we've got the socket soldered. And then there's just a few supplementary components like transistors, capacitors, uh, presumably a power sockets, um, video sockets, and so on and so forth. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching me put together the Harlequin. Um, I think it's come along quite nicely now. Glad I located that resistor in the end, masquerading as a RAM chip. And tune into the next video, and hopefully you'll see this board populated with some more components. It will look more like a computer there with the sockets in. And um, I'll go through some of the toys that I've got, my EEPROM burner and my component tester.